I think if all that mattered was the economy, the models say that the president would be reelected. I think the problem that we have is trying to figure out, do normal rules apply? So normally, the incumbent in a strong economy, that's a major boost for them. Jim, no, that's what? also ahead, usually true thought, at sorry. the midterm. And the economy was going well in 2018, and the president suffered a pretty historic defeat. So I think we're trying to, to weigh those two things off. Jimmy, uh, respond to what Austin just said there, all things being equal, and if the economy stays where it is, does the president win re-election? And then, if so, how do you account for what Austin just described, which is a, a, a really major defeat uh, in the midterms last year? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, it's not just the economy. And actually, I think if you look at the research, the uh, sort of the correlation between economic growth and approval ratings isn't what it used to be. Sort of as if we've moved, you know, it, that was really a correlation we saw really since the Great Depression. Uh, it's been less true in recent decades. Certainly, the president is counting on that. Uh, they call it their 333 plan 3% growth, 3% wage growth, 3% ish unemployment rate. That should be enough. Uh, clearly, that will not be the case. Uh, uh, it's not transferring into a very strong approval rating. Uh, so there's, I think there's great risk that he, is, he does not act like the traditional incumbent, which who usually wins, and as Austin said, with a good economy, usually wins. Uh, on the contrary, it's going to be an extraordinarily close election this time around. Let's talk, Austin, a little bit about the Fed, excuse me, the Fed meeting uh, tomorrow and whether you think the Fed will or should cut interest rates uh, and how you react as compared with how the president reacts to the idea that the uh, ECB may be ready to add stimulus into its pipeline. Well, look, I, I have been saying that I thought, despite what the president says in kind of bluster, I thought there are definitely some soft spots in the economy and that when the Fed was, was getting confident that they were going to be able to raise the rates four times in the year, I, I, I did not think they'd be able to do that. I think now... Ironically, it's the president's publicly attacking the Fed and demanding that they cut the rates is kind of the only thing preventing them from cutting the rates. I think they objectively, if they looked at the data now, would be inclined to, to give some relief. But in the back of their minds, got to be this feeling of, well, geez, do we want the market to think that the president is bullying us and that, that the president publicly... Uh, was discussing whether they should demote the Fed chair. I mean, it's totally inappropriate uh, and outrageous. Yeah. We would lose, I don't, we would probably, the Dow would probably be off 5, 10% in a day if the president actually moved to try to demote the Fed chair. Uh, so I, I don't think that they'll say much more yeah. about that. Jim? Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think clearly that would be a very bad day for the market uh, <laughs> if, if the president does something uh, that's that, you know, really almost incomprehensible to demote the Fed chair. I'm not sure how much that's actually influencing uh, what the Fed is doing. Uh, the Fed has plenty of reasons, uh, I think, to, uh, to go easier. I think the, the, the president may provide a reason, but that's through this trade war, which I think is weighing down on the economy. I think it's weighing down on business investment. I think it's creating a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So the president may be giving the Fed a reason to go easy, but just kind of unintentionally.